Screencast here is going to cover Chapter 4, Lesson 3. Okay, so we're now to the point where we can start uh, taking a document and laying things out within that document and making text, text, text wrap around it. If you look at what I'm looking at here on this document, this is what we're going to make. Um, it starts off as just a blank white document with text, but we're going to drop in pictures and make the text wrap around it. Now, there is some differences in just placing an image. InDesign gives us a lot of options with graphics. So let's do a Command O to open, and let's open up 4-6 from the data files. <clears throat> you're gonna get a little, a little box here that says you're missing a font. We'll deal with that here in a sec. Let's do a Command Shift S to save, and let's save this in our classwork folder as flowers. Let's grab our text tool and let's click anywhere in the text frames and hold a, we'll do a command A to select all the text. With all the text selected, I'm going to go up to window on the menu, go to workspace, go to typography. And I'm going to go to my characters palette and I'm going to change my font to Times New Roman regular. There, that's better. Now we actually have a document to work with. I'm going to go to my uh, selection tool. Let's open up the Layers palette, and on the Layers palette, what we're going to do is we're going to click the Lock button on the text layer, so I'm going to click Lock. This way, as we work with our document, nothing happen happens to the text frames. It's all uh, locked in. Let's go on the Background layer. Okay, On the Background layer, we're going to go over to the Rectangle Frame tool. So here's a new tool. Right underneath the pencil, it's called the Rectangle Frame tool. Okay, we're going to draw one. Try to go some. Uh, try to go about just the same amount as I am. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go right in here. I'm going to slice that E. I'm going to put it in oh about like this. What this is is a frame, and you can put things inside this frame. And those things that are inside the frame can be by themselves and not be restricted by the borders of this frame. Okay, so once I drop that one in there, what we're going to do is go up to File on the menu and place. And it's going to place it inside that frame we just did because that's what we're selected on. If you go to your chapter 4 data files, we're looking for at the bottom, it's called Windmills Ghost. Windmills Ghost. Notice it's a PSD. When you pump stuff into InDesign, you don't have to save it as a PNG first. So if I have this PSD and I open it up in Photoshop, I can edit it and it will update this document at the same time. So windmillsghost.psd, click open. It puts it inside the text frame. Now, if you're thinking like I'm thinking, it doesn't look like you're seeing what you're supposed to see. And that's true. This picture is actually really big. It's just fairly small. Uh, the text frame is fairly small. Let's go to the selection tool. Now on the selection tool, click anywhere to deselect the frame. So I'm going to click on the pasteboard to deselect the frame. Now let's click the eyeball on the background, uh, eye on the background layer to hide it, just for a sec. And then let's target the images layer. Okay, now that we're on the images layer, we're going to go to File, Place. Okay, and we're going to navigate through our data files, chapter 4, and we're looking for Windmills Color. Windmills Color. All right. Now, when I go File Place, and I haven't decided a, a frame that it should go in, my cursor changes to this little paintbrush with an arrow, and I can see there's a, a, a grayscale, an opaque uh, image that I'm looking at. I'm just going to come up here, and I'm going to click on the F, because I want the top left corner to be there. So just kind of an option. Now, what happens is I it just dropped in a frame and an image. <clears throat> a framed frame and the image. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and let's click uh, let's click the eyeball on images. We'll come right back to it. Let's turn the eyeball on background. And let's click on the background layer to target the actual background layer as well.
And this time, let's go over to the direct selection tool. So we've, we haven't looked at these for a while, but you have two selection tools. You have the selection tool, which is regular, and then the direct selection tool. Let's get on the direct selection tool. So with the direct selection tool selected, let's position it over the graphic and then click on the graphic itself. When you click on that graphic itself, it's going to become a hand pointer. Now here's what you got to understand. If I, I'm just going to kind of zoom in here so you can see it. This is the picture. The orange is my text, my picture frame. The blue is the size of the actual picture itself. If you look at your options bar, this options bar will change if you click on the picture or the actual frame itself. So if I go back to my direct, if I go back to my selection tool, click on the pasteboard, and then click on the frame. These numbers change when I go direct selection tool back on the image. So in a roundabout way, what that means is I can have a larger image in a frame, but I can just use only portions of that image if I wanted to. <clears throat> so get on your direct selection tool, click on the graphic that's inside that frame. If you click and hold, what you get is now an arrow. And what that arrow allows you to do is, I can actually see an opaque version of this entire image. So if I want to use certain parts of this image within the frame, this is how I can shift it around. Here's what I'll do. I'll put this windmill right in the center of that. Right in the center of that. Now let's go to the selection tool and click on the graphic. I'm going to click on the pasteboard, and I'm going to click on the graphic. So now I have my orange box selected. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top left sizing corner, and I'm going to drag it to the top left corner of my document. And I'm going to take the bottom right of the text of the frame, the picture frame, and drag it to the bottom right of the page. Now you can see I just gained a little bit within the picture itself. Now if I go to the direct selection tool, I can move the image on the document as I see fit. I'm going to frame it up right on top of the entire thing. Then I'm going to go back to my selection tool, and I'm going to take the background layer and move it underneath the text layer. So now everything is on top of it. So what's the moral of the story there? The main thing you got to understand is you drop a box in called a frame. Then you put things inside the frame. If we have, if we just start dropping images in, um, things will get nasty down the line when you start putting multiple images in and text. So if we have everything in a frame, it keeps the layout more permanent. Okay, let's, uh, we got the background layer all the way down, and let's go up to the images layer, and let's click the eyeball on the images layer. Okay, let's get on the images layer. Let's go to our direct selection tool, and let's click on the actual graphic itself. Direct selection tool click on the graphic. Now what we do is we have, we have some, some scaling options here. We'll put our options bar. What we're gonna do is we're gonna scale this down a little bit. So up here on your options bar, there's a, a scaling, it's an X and a Y. It's currently set to 100. I'm gonna type in 50 and hit tab. Notice that it's gonna put 50 in the bottom because this piece of chain is pushed down which links the X and Y together. So now my picture has, has um, shrunk kind of like I could shrink it if I just grabbed the bottom right hand corner sizing. That's just dealing with some scaling. Okay, now let's grab our selection tool and let's move it oh, about right here kind of in the center. Right back here in the center. Okay, with it right there, let's go up to uh, object on the menu and let's go down to fitting See, fitting right here, and let's fit the frame to content. Fit frame to content. 
So my frame is now wrapped around the individual itself, the individual picture itself. <clears throat> With the frame still selected, which is what we have selected, let's come up here to our, uh, to our width box, our, our actual location. Let's go to our X, and let's put this at four and a half inches on our X axis, three inches on the Y, if you can see, go ahead and take a look at mine. So I, I, I made an error. If you look at it here, okay, so I lost my image. I'm going to do a command Z. Some of this is going to happen to you. I lost my image, so I'm not selected on the right thing. I'm going to click on the pasteboard, and I'm going to click on it again. What happened was I was selected on the picture and not the text on the, on the picture frame. So what I need to do is if I'm on the frame, I can see an orange line. If you see blue, you're on the wrong one. Now when I select on the actual frame, here's what we can do. I'm going to be on the frame. I'm going to go up to the x-axis, and I'm going to move this to 4.5, and my y, I'm going to move to 3.32. And I'm going to change the width and height of it. I want my, uh, my, my width to be, let's go 3.32 as well, and our height to be 2.125, 2.125. Now, if you just notice what happened, if you're watching your picture as that was going down, our picture just got cut off. Go grab your direct selection tool, then click on the graphic. If you move the graphic, see, so the box, the text frame, it, the, uh, the picture frame itself, I can move this within the box. The problem is if I start stretching this out and moving it, I, I might get the wrong look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to object on the menu, I'm going to go to fitting, and I'm going to say fit my content to the frame. So if it, just put in a different word here. So instead of saying content, why don't we say fit the picture to the frame? Because realistically, we're dealing with a picture inside of a frame. And I want this picture to match the frame. So here we go. Uh, let's see. Fitting. Fit content to frame. There we go. Now if it looks kind of jacked up, what I need to do is go to object fitting, I could say fit content proportionally. That might make it look, I probably should do that step prior to. I'm going to click on the selection tool and click to deselect. Let's go ahead and click on the graphic so I have the frame selected. With the frame selected, let's come over here to our panels and let's open up the text wrap panel. With the text wrap panel open, let's click on uh, this guy right here, it's called wrap around object shape. So if I wrap it around the object shape, then it, the text then starts to ride the borders of my frame. Now that's a little, those, that text is probably a little too close to that frame. So what we do is we change our top offset. So in our top offset, let's, let's, add, a, uh, let's add just not much, 0 0.125. 0 0.125, hit enter. What that does then is that puts a nice little border around the picture. It's invisible, but it keeps the text from writing the thin line of that picture. Let's click to deselect. <clears throat> Let's go to File, Place. Let's scroll down to our data files. And we want, let's see, Windmills Silhouette. Windmills Silhouette. Okay, it's looking like it did before when I had my background image, which was I got this cursor with a opaque image. I'm going to come up here and click on the F for flowers so it keeps it up here kind of in the top left corner. All right, so I've got an image inside a frame, and I want to move it. So I'm going to just move it down here to the uh, bottom left-hand corner, and I want the blade here, oh, the bottom right blade, to be right about here. With the frame still selected, let's go to our text wrap and let's wrap around objects. Now notice that it's wrapping around the objects, but it's coming down here to the bottom corner of this text frame and it's typing in a couple words here. We don't want that. So what we can do is actually wrap to the right side. So that's going to keep everything off on the right side. Let's put a little bit of bubble around this. So let's put in a, let's see, let's do a 0.125 again on our top offset. And we get a little bit of a bubble around the windmill frames. Now, professionally, it's not good to leave a, a frame 
off the document like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the, the, the frame here. I'm going to snap that to the uh, bottom of the document. And I need to do the same for, I might need to do a command minus to zoom out here. There we go. And I need to take the bottom one and snap it up as well. Okay, so why is it, why is it a good thing to have a picture frame and a, uh, a, like a picture frame and then a picture inside of it? That reason right there. If I can take a frame and snap it on the edge of the document and then put the picture inside of it and cut the edges off, that's a lot better than just throwing something in Microsoft Word and just trying to make things work and stretching out a picture or so. Do a Command S to save. And I'll flip back to my original document, and there we go. We've, we've made exactly what we need to make. That concludes uh, Chapter 4, Lesson 3.